Hi everyone and welcome to Homo de Dance, the channel on history and board games and we are back. Uh, so it's actually episode two of that new se streaming season. Uh, so last week we had Mike Rinella uh, for an interview. Uh, obviously we talked a lot about Area Impulse games so if you're interested in that you should check it out. But today uh, we are starting our, I think, long series. So expect the, the next streaming season to be I would say around 75% of the videos with Liz. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's actually <laughs> making her move on the channel, making sure that she's present uh, almost all of the time. And of course, <laughs> if we are late, it was totally because of her, not because I decided to make a coffee last minute or something like this. Uh, it's, it's totally on you, Liz, right? Uh, yes, it is <laughs> totally my fault. I take responsibility. Yeah, and someone noted that I got the time zones wrong. Yeah, I did, but um, I think we're at this stage where uh, I kind of use time zone as, as I feel, and people will get the from context what I actually mean. So I think it's also part of the Homo Dance experience is to figure out, I say a time, but you have to feel for what time I'm talking about. And I think it's fine. Look at you. You're all here. Hi, Arthur. I see that Joe is here. Pierre is here. Uh, Brent is here. We have Jan from Let's Play History who's here. Alistair, new uh, joiner on the server who has an insane collection of uh, old uh, computers uh, is also here. Thanks for joining us. Um, and we have also uh, some big Liz fans here today. So that's really cool. Uh, and for this uh, first uh, session of the 100th stream that we're going to do with Liz in the coming uh, months, uh, we're going to play uh, this game, Onus Trajanus. So that's uh, the game by the Spanish publisher Dra Dracos Ideas, which is a quite interesting, uh, different kind of war game, uh, actually in a category that I don't usually play that much, and that's figuring war games. Because it is actually, uh, it is in, in other ways a pure figuring war game, but just has this uh, neat trick that makes it very attractive to me is that you're not using minis. You don't have to paint anything. You're actually using uh, cards like these and those cards have stats on them and nice drawings and you place them on the table and you move them around. And I think this is pretty awesome a system. It's not the first game that does that. There are other games that actually did take that approach. Um, and I think one of them that I tried in the past and that I extremely enjoyed and want to play again, and maybe Liz, I could convince you to play it, that's Blucher. Uh, Blucher is a, is a system that is also revolving on cards, even if a lot of players are actually using figurines to play it. And you have those cards, and yeah, it's the same uh, kind of system, pure figurine war games using cards in the Napoleonic era. Uh, you would have picked it up from its name. And I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we also have Niels who's here. Uh, maybe just a specific shout out to Niels uh, as uh, Niels uh, and David Thompson have a project on Kickstarter right now, uh, Battle Cards, a uh, pretty interesting solo dice project, a solo game that I played myself, which is quite rare because I hate uh, solo games. So it's ah! a good <laughs> it's it's not great because it's a solo game, but as far as solo <laughs> games go, I think it's an interesting uh, piece of design. So definitely uh, look out for it. It's more. So it's more I will add. But yeah, I will add. I've got two previews up on my channel of two different games. So if you want to see them, um, my my channel Beyond Solitaire has two different uh, battle card videos. So you can check them out. It's Fred. Fred is getting arrested. Yeah, <laughs> definitely getting arrested. <laughs> Uh, Let's Play History says needs to get Onus on the table again as well. Uh, well, we need to get Onus on the table at all, so you're ahead of us. Please help. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's maybe one thing that I need to say is that it's both Liz and I first game. So if you're watching this because I tricked you with the title of the video thinking you're going to learn the rules, I'm just going to put it out there. We're going to make so many rules mistakes that it's going to make the designer go insane. Uh, but the purpose of that video is just for us to walk through, learn the game as we play, uh, and figuring out all together. If some of you in the chat know about the rules, want to correct us, please feel free to drop in a comment. Uh, I think that's completely awesome. But just, yeah, uh, a bit of warning. It's our first game. We're just figuring it out. And maybe just for context, uh, we put one of the battles that was one of the simplest uh, battles, it seemed uh, to me, uh, looking through that 
pretty uh, thick uh, campaign book. Uh, there is actually quite a lot of battles in there and a campaign mode, and there are different campaigns, which is super interesting. So there is a lot of game in that box, and that's uh, pretty cool. I should note that um, uh, the publisher sent me a review copy, so really appreciate their support and helping us making those pieces of content. So shout, like, shout out to publishers supporting uh, channels out there. That's uh, really awesome. We really appreciate that. And to all the publishers who don't, well, we don't appreciate that. <laughs> So I'll say I also got a review copy and I want to apologize in advance to, to Draco Ideas because we are gonna butcher your game. Yeah, but I think that we, we won't butcher it and say it's bad. We'll just butcher it. Yeah, we'll butcher <laughs> it out of love. Uh no, but I think it's uh I think it's it's pretty cool. So the battle that we're taking for for now and that you can see on screen, we've did the setup before the stream. That's the Battle of Isurium uh in uh, um 117 CE. Uh, so it's the opposing the Celts uh, to the Romans. Uh, and basically, a uh, small overview, historical overview that we have here. Uh, and maybe I can read you uh, that historical overview. So the once powerful Celtic tribe of the Brigantes located in northwestern Britannia rose up in rebellion under the leadership of Loiger. And Loiger is actually on the battlefield right now. You can see it in the middle of Lise's um, uh, setup, uh, taking advantage of the fact that the local army was weakened due to constant movement of troops to other parts of the empire. After storming the nearest uh, auxiliary garrison uh, by surprise and sending messengers to the Caledonian tribes for help, the Brigantes uh, gathered the troops and marched against Eboracum, a base of the Legio 9 Hispania. Uh, sowing terror and destruction along the way, classic stuff. Um, instead of letting the rebels besiege their position and overrun the auxiliary troops uh, on, in the border, the legion went out to meet the powerful Brigante contingent, uh, which they intercepted in the vicinity of Isorium. And actually, this would be represented by the fact that, as most figure in war games, there is a point system. Uh, and the Celts army is actually a 1,200 points uh, army, and my Roman army is only 750 points. So we are uh, like somewhat disadvantaged, but I think the the might of the Roman troops are are going to show that number is not what is most important. Um, Just so, follow me into the Tudorberg forest in another mm -hmm. land, and I will take care of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just and just to be clear, there there are illustrations of forests and stuff like this, and those are purely aesthetics things. Uh, the battle itself doesn't contain any terrain, so we'll move um, on uh, on empty terrain here. Uh, so just uh, for you to know, uh, but yeah, I won't tell you what happens during the battle. We'll see what happens, and I will let you know if we change history or not. But that's basically it. There is no special rules. Uh, I have a leader that is called. Um, without a name, Sin Nomine. Sin uh, Nomine, yes. So, yeah, so uh, <laughs> nothing here. And your leader is uh, Loiger, uh, just here. So as you can see, our setup for now is actually hidden. Uh, and we both have two decoys. Uh, so we will reveal, uh, I think we reveal now, right? At the Do beginning we? of the game. Um, let me check. I mean, we should have to at some point, right? Yeah, we, but I don't know if we if it's when we get uh, in range. Why did we or... even put decoys out? I think... <laughs> I'm not sure. I have no I'm idea sure. we're doing <laughs> I don't think we should have had done that. Uh, Finally, issue for the action card. When do we reveal the stuff? While Fred's looking, I just want to tell everybody I had a huge crisis about which side I was supposed to play because I didn't know if I should, like... I, I make my livelihood off of the Romans, but I'm descended from the Celts. So which? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, and we need to get some of those... Um, uh, some of those action cards. And that's something that is actually quite different from Blucher. Uh, Blucher has a super interesting activation system, but uh, this one is actually card-based, and it kind of reminds me slightly of, um, how do you call it? Uh, Command and Colors, uh, because you play cards for uh, activation. Oh, I don't have a hand. OK, interesting. Uh, you should some... do. Yeah, I sh no, I don't. It should be it should be based on your oh. leadership number. So look on your leader card. No, no, no but that's not that. I, I didn't put myself as a player. Uh, so that's what I meant. I didn't have a. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I was like, what are we talking about? Okay, we're good. We're good. So you can see here at the bottom right, uh, the leadership uh, of Cine Nomine is six. So I'm gonna get six cards, and I'm gonna show you what the cards look like. So those are uh, really basic cards. They have two sides, but in that case, when they are in my hand. Um, 
the thing that is most important now is actually the part on the top, which is the activation part that tells me uh, with each of those cards what can activate. And the other things are events, but most of the time events are going to be drawn randomly at the beginning of uh, each uh, skirmish. When I can see that Niels is upset at me uh, saying his game is not interesting because it's a solo game. I mean, do you, what did you expect me to say? No, it's really, it's really the thing about this game is that <laughs> It plays extremely fast. It gives you some interesting decisions to take. I think it's the most interesting Market Garden game I played. But to be fair, I think most Market Garden games are pretty boring. Uh, so the, oh, Joe's yeah. asking you, okay, and the Cine art Nomine is insane. historical figure. Uh, Cine Nomine means without a name. He's a nameless historical figure. Yeah, Cine Nomine, without a name. Uh, I think he probably missed that. He's not good at listening overall, uh, that guy. I teach so. teenagers. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So you're used to that. Uh, okay, we have quite a few people who joined us. Uh, so we have our uh, thingies here. I'm just checking who's player one. Uh, oh, maybe we should talk about the victory conditions. Uh, oh, yeah, what do we want to choose? You can choose victory conditions for this from, from no, my no, beginning no. of these rules. There, there is one victory condition for you. Oh, it's a and, scenario. Yeah, it's a scenario. So you need to, um, when you reach 75% uh, uh, of uh, Roman casualty, uh, we'll do a leadership check. Uh, and if I fail the leadership check, uh, it's a victory for you. And when you reach 40% casualty, uh, we will start doing leadership check. Uh, and if you do fail the leadership check, uh, I will win. But that also, seems unfair. <laughs> if, I, if I kill your general, uh, Loeger, I also win the game. So I have two victory conditions and you have one. Um, and you have to hurt me quite a lot. Uh, and I actually didn't manage to optimize really my uh, army. I was I was okay to have up to 750, but I ended up with 720. So that's not uh, not great. And uh, yeah, so we have a few questions here. Yeah, no terrain for this one. Uh, do some scenario has have terrain? Actually, yeah, uh, a lot of them do. I would say most of them do. And you have different types of terrain. So you've got forests, you've got rivers, you've got bridges, you've got uh, small fortifications and stuff like this. You've also got like full forts. You have, you have sieges. You have quite a lot of range uh, in terms of what you have there. And once again, there is a lot of battle. And I can see that Pierre was also... Um, uh, was also uh, uh, answering that question, so that's um, so that's great. And yeah, as you said, Pierre, no 3D terrains. It's only card based, but uh, there is a lot of people in the community of players who are actually doing their own terrain. Uh, but yeah, um, just looking at the different comments, we have quite a few here. I think that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay, we got so much comment. I'm just gonna skim through them. <laughs> And uh, I think we're going to probably reveal the only thing that I'm not sure. Hey, Eric, thanks for joining us. Is uh, I am not sure who's going first. I'm going to check if there is a first player. Yeah. Uh, uh, I saw so, a question from Brant. He said, which ones are tougher to deal with, high school kids or internet chuds? Uh, in terms of mental energy, high schoolers, because I don't care about the chuds enough to give them too much rent in my head. Uh, but in terms of... Uh, in terms of like general delightfulness, high schoolers are actually great. They're fun. They're like very smart assy, but that's cute. And uh, they're just, they're open to so many things. Yeah, I'm sorry, Joe. There was too many comments and, and we have to, to move to move along. Uh, and I'm sure it was super interesting and people in the chat enjoyed it for sure. But it's just that I don't have time for your shit. Um, <laughs> 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 Spice level high today. <laughs> no, it's been it, it's it, it's been a it's been a, a challenging week. So I'm happy to have a, a bit of a game night to um, uh, to. Uh, yeah, to... honestly, I feel like yes, we're playing this game and we're trying to get it right. But really, the point of today is to just, just enjoy fun. ourselves and like yeah. we're so glad that y'all showed up so we could just all hang out. Yeah, you know what? I think I should start because I have the weakest army. I think it's only fair. Uh, Aren't we... I ambushing you? No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, Go I, I, I'm going towards you. Actually, I'm the one pushing forward. Um, all right. But... Well, Ayamu, so let's go. The, the problem for me is that all anything that I know that's period appropriate is in Latin, which is very inappropriate for the Celts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. They probably didn't like them that much. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, I didn't find anything about the revealing of the stuff. Uh, so casualties, death of a general, total additional surrender, troop deployment... Do we only reveal upon activation? That's what I'm wondering. Depth, front, it is possible. Starting with the player with the most unit cards. 
Uh, each player will place oh one unit card face down in their deployment area. Their units. The other player will deploy the rest. Okay. Afterwards, the players reveal their troops. So we reveal now. You may deploy hey. units. Nice. Is it is it F? Do I click the card and hit F? Uh, yeah. If you click F, you're gonna flip them. I think Go they're ahead. all upside down. No. Yes. Oh well, I'll figure it out. <laughs> This is yeah. what happens. I'm terrible at tabletop simulator, so Not we'll worry. just live with my choices. Yeah, because I think if you if you fight from the back, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, I think it's better if you face me, um, and that's my. I think so yes. Yeah, that's my strategy tip of the day. So if you're a new uh, war gamer here, uh, that's a, like professional tip here. Uh, you want to fight facing the enemy. Uh, usually, when you're showing your back, it's it's not very efficient tactically. That's no. kind of. Uh, that's yeah. only how I do emotional warfare on my cat, or the other way around. <laughs> yes. that's, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, uh, okay, so now you're facing the right direction. We've yes. uh, done the thing. Finally, shuffle action cards and deal each player as many cards as the leadership value of their general. The starting player would be whoever the historical scenario you're going to play indicate, or whoever wins a die roll uh, with one die by adding leadership value of their general. So as the, the the thing is not saying uh, who's that, uh, so your leadership is six, my leadership is six. is six, so it's going to be a straight die roll to see who wins. Very well. I roll the six. Probably, oh. uh, yep. yep. Okay, I'm going first. Okay. Cool. Very well. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, so we should get uh, going. So uh, there is a, a pretty simple uh, sequence of play. And actually, the thing is that it, the game comes with a, a series of small player aid on the card. I think they could have done actual uh, player aids, like a bit chunkier, because I think it's a bit uh, it's a bit tight. It does give you the turn sequence, a few reminders of modifiers. <laughs> and the reminders of what the abilities are, because you're going to see that all of our units have special abilities. Uh, so for example, if you look at those uh, legionaries, uh, they have Wall of Shields, uh, which gives them a defense of plus one in melee, I think, um, uh, or something like this. Uh, two, two, two. Then they have, uh, uh, actually, they have, uh, they can send javelins. Uh, so that's cool. That actually maps out to some of their events. And then they have they are professionals, so you can reroll once, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, but we look into the details of that uh, later, and there is more details uh, in the rules for each of those things. But basically, that's the idea. On the left, you have uh, the attack value. In the middle, next to the uh, bow and arrow, you have um, uh, you have the attack value at a distance. Uh, in the middle, you have defense value. Uh, then, with the flag, is uh, the morale. And finally, you have two more statistics. Uh, one is health point, and the last one is the moves. So the first thing that I'm going to do is activation. So I'm going to play a card from my hand to activate cards. Uh, do, 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 do. I did read the rules, Russ. I did read the rules. It's just that it's the first time that I'm playing it, so it's a, uh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit messy. Uh, and I think it's gonna, but I'm sure it's gonna be. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. So what do I want to activate? I don't want to activate too many units because I think I'm gonna get confused. Choose one of your units, activate it, and activate all your units within 3D U of that unit. Ugh, don't want to do oh, that. Just to clarify something, since I've got kind of lines going on, you can move through units that are your own as long as you're not changing directions at the same time, right? Yes, and you cannot stop there. So you, your your movement yeah. needs to end uh, outside of uh, of your units, and you cannot move uh, through. Um, you cannot move through units, uh, yeah, uh, enemy units. Bene. All right. Uh, uh, okay. So what do I want to do? You may transfer your general. I don't care. It's me. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's useless. Uh, okay, so I'm going to play General Mobilization. Uh, so this card says that I can activate half of my units uh, rounding down. Uh, those were decoys, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to put them uh, here on the side. Uh, and I have six units, so that's going to be three units. And I think that's what I am going to do is... Uh, hmm, where are the activation counters here? 
I guess this is stuff off to the side. I don't really know. Yeah, it's one of those, but I don't remember what they are. Oh, the ancient rules. I like, I think remember. you put, like, feet if you marched. Yeah, uh, I think so. No, yeah, foot for no. The, the feet is actually just for the activation general. So, in okay. so yeah, so you can just put the feet uh, on there. Excellent. Uh, so I think I'm gonna do this, uh, and I'm gonna activate this, this, and hmm, this. So those are the diff two different things. So that's Ooh, my. Oh, these are some fancy the cataphractari. Yeah. So I have the Comtari, which is a, a pretty, they're basic, uh, but uh, those guys are pretty awesome. Look at how epic they look. They have metal masks and everything. I think they are going to like literally obliterate uh, your lame Celts. Um, anyway. They are a vibe. So <laughs> let me think about this. Uh, hmm. So they can move up to five, uh, and this ruler is three. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it in a straight line here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So I'm going to do. So yeah, from what I understand, you can move diagonally. You yeah. can like there's a and, bunch of different options. Yeah, and actually changing your rotation is one du. Uh, so and you can change up to ninety degrees. So that's the. So that's the thing. And yeah, the art is really great. I really like it. It has the. Like a European um, uh, comic book style, which I which I like quite a quite a bit. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, the activation cards have a lot of variety. It's super super interesting. I agree. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do then. So that's for three moves, uh, three DUs. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to move an additional DU. Whoop! That was smooth. Yeah, Better than pretty... I'm gonna do this. I'm not actually gonna make fun of you because that would be foolish. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna. Ha you're... <laughs> My mockery would be ill placed. <laughs> yeah, pro it will probably be ill placed. So that's gonna be an additional move here. And then for my last DU, I'm gonna reorient myself uh, slightly like uh, like so. So that's my first move. Uh, those ones are also at five, uh, and they are gonna do kind of the same thing. Uh, Snip, snap. Three. I have never played a game where you actually had to measure anything like this before. This is very interesting to me. Uh, so this is the first time you're playing. The first, uh... I've never in my life done. I have no idea what I'm doing, but that isn't enough to stop me because hubris. Uh, that's fine. I think it's a good game to to start this definitely, uh, and that's my fifth one. If I'm playing it well. Uh... So that's my first movements. And then I'm going to do my third activation, which is uh, those guys. Hmm. So I can move and do ranged attacks. The problem is that I don't think that I would be in range. I think there is about like 70 use be behind uh, between us, and I can move two. So I think it's probably uh, safer to just slightly move like this uh, and move my two DUs. And two is going to be that third here. Yeah. I'm looking at, I'm reminding myself what all the numbers are. Yeah, maybe we can talk about uh, the, maybe yeah, we can, yeah, we'll we can talk about. Because there's, so there's like two numbers on these. And I was like, okay, let me check again, like which number is which. So yeah, what I was saying. So on the val on the left on the left hand side, what you have here, uh, I'm gonna put it back. So you see the number under the SPQR. That's 100. So that's the value of the unit when you're building your army. When I was saying that I had 750. So if I summed all of this for all of my cards, it had to be below 750. That's the first thing. The second thing is hit and damage. So the first three is the hit that you the thing that you need to roll to do a hit, and then. Uh, the damage that you can uh, that you can do. The second one is the range attack. So the first is the power. So I attack at three, and my range is two. And DU is the basic uh, unit measurement. Uh, the third one is defense. Um, so the first value is the ability to avoid. So that's the dodge value. And the second is the armor value. 
Then you have the morale with the little flag. Seven, that's the number of health points that they have. And two is uh, the distance that they can move. But basically, that was my first move. Uh, and because we were still pretty far away from each other, uh, that was my, uh, my whole turn because there is no range attack. There are no skirmish. Uh, there are not melee. There is no uh, flight phase because uh, no, uh, no units is in flight mode. So we are fine for now. I'm going to put this as a discard just here. And that was my turn. And Russ is asking if you've ever played uh, X-Wing. No. Because this is, a, I think it's the best entry point uh, to uh, to minis, actually. I think X-Wings and Wings of Glory, like the, all that whole system, is is actually definitely the best way to to get into it. Um, probably a lot simpler than than what we're doing right now, but it's... Uh, yeah. Uh, no guts, no glory. It's all right. No, I, uh... Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I moved uh, this first move for those. Uh, actually, one... Uh, one do you too far? You're right, Joe. I I did cheat. Thanks for looking out for me, Joe. I appreciate it. It was not. I voluntary. expect you to say nothing when I do the wrong thing. No, yeah, yeah, of course. He, yeah, he's true. definitely not <laughs> gonna, gonna say anything. If anything, he's gonna give you tips to cheat better. Uh, but... Perfect, Joe. My DMs are open. <laughs> And yeah, I agree, uh, Jan. Actually, I think that reading those rules, I, I do think that a basic battle in Blue Cœur is probably simpler than a basic battle in uh, in Onus. But I think that the range of complexity of Blue Cœur between uh, a, a basic battle to something more complex is a lot bigger than, at least from what I felt, than what I saw in Onus. Uh, so, so yeah. <laughs> I feel like everybody's got your number, Fred. All right, yeah, is it my yeah. turn? Oh, wait, did you yeah. draw back up at the end of the turn? Oh, yeah, I need to draw back up. Okay, uh, sorry. Do I? Yeah, end of turn. End of turn, I need to draw back to my leadership. Uh, no, just, oh, because I played one leadership, I uh, even though I played events or anything, I'm only uh, drawing one card. Yeah. Because okay, if so you, you didn't... basically go back up to six, right? Yeah, because you can decide not to play an activation card, and then at the end of the turn, you have the option of discarding three and drawing four. Uh, ah, so, so you can basically yeah. kind of turtle for a little bit if you don't like your cards. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to remind you the options for the end of turn. Uh, it's actually quite an, an interesting strategic decision, I think, depending on the cards that you have, because it can be pretty. So, so if you uh, did a turn without playing orders, uh, the active players did not play orders, uh, even if they play event, they must choose one of the following actions, discard. So the active player can discard a card if they want to and draw the same number of cards plus one. Uh, or you can draw. The active players then can draw three cards. So that can be a way to replenish your hand if you played an activation and a lot of events and you're starting to be a bit uh, a bit tight. Gotcha. Gotcha. We'll have to review that when we get there, but it is fine. Okay, so it's my go. Yep. Um, okay, I'm going to do a cavalry advance, which means that I can activate. I should have put a mounting unit in here, but I'm dumb. But I have Activity. cavalry. So we are going to activate my cavalry. I have one over here and one over here. So I think what I'd like to do is kind of start moving up this way. Basic uh, count disorganization, having cavalry on both sides. Big mistake. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Let me just say, I'm, I'm a historian, so I like the big like show pieces, like the big thoughts of history, right? Like I don't really know how to do tactical tightness so this is actually probably really good for me like as somebody who's learning about battles at all i'll learn from experience it's fine <laughs> all right um so that said i can't be too sad all right so my cavalry can move five so i think what i will do so just to check so you can activate all mounted units uh yeah. and unfortunately Celts didn't have elephants but if they did you could also activate them wouldn't that be so much cooler? I yeah, mean, that would be awesome. That it would Celtic, be so awesome. I mean, Celtic elephants. Whoa, I'm all in for it. Yeah. <laughs> all the elephants. Thanks, Timothy. At least there is one person in the chat that is uh, rooting for me, even if you're doing it uh, out of spite. Uh, at least I have uh, someone supporting me, and I and I appreciate that. All right. So let's say that I want to move up three over here. How would I do it? I put the ruler here. Yeah. And I go one, two, three. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, up to three. So, yeah. Like that. Exactly. And then if I want to tilt. So that would cost one DU. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was planning movement. to do four and then five. Like yeah. Just kind of moving up. 
So I'm going to check the um, movement just to be sure of this, but I think, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's one DU to do the the tilting. Well, let's just move one more for now. Four. Do, do, do. So you do have uh, regular movements. So I've got one move left. I'm trying to set yeah. one and move you can one move, more for a tilt. You can move up to 90 degrees um, for a tilt. I'm going to tilt just a little bit, just a little bit. Enough to go running right at you. Perfect. It, it's not perfect. I suck at this, but this will be fun. All right, and then um, let's do, I guess we'll move this guy. So I guess the question is, can I get close enough to shoot you? I believe I can. So you're not allowed to measure before it's starting to shoot. That's really an important part of the of the game. So you can decide to shoot, and ha you have to indicate that you are uh, doing it. And then you measure, and 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 you'll figure out how far I am, and if you can actually shoot at me, which is actually quite fun. Oh, that's hilarious! Should we just do it just for the hell of it? Because why not? Yeah, sure. I mean, even if you like, I really don't care if I win this or not. Like, that's not really the point for today. So let's just do it for like f around and find out, sake, right? Yeah, but I, like, I, I I think that if you look at that unit, you know that those charts are not in range. Because they have a range of three DUs, and that's basically. Oh wait, I can't river. move and attack on the same. T can I move oh. and then do range attack? So that will depend. Some units can, some others can. I guess I thought I could, but that we should establish that, shouldn't we? Because of uh, course I can't shoot you from here, but I can absolutely shoot you if I like. Yeah, uh, over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I have enough movement to get close to shoot you, but like if I can't so and I have to move, I would. I'll just wait for your dumb you self to come to over here and then fire. <laughs> like. If you want to shoot, if I remember correctly, you have to do a reduced uh, movement. Uh, so, so reduced movement applies when units perform a special maneuver that evolves an additional time cost, such as entering formation or performing ranged attack. So okay. you'll have to divide your move by two. So you would have to move by half of what you want to do. So okay, in so that case, up or down? Uh, round down, but that's 2.5, so that's fine. Uh, so you can do 2.5. You can actually measure halves uh, in, in this. So you would so there is no rounding. So you would move two point five, and then you can, can I move before I decide whether I'm shooting you though. That's the problem. Uh, I I think I think wait a minute. I think no. I don't think so. No, I think you commit. You commit. You oh, commit God. to what you're gonna do. So that's that's pretty awesome. This sounds like garbage, Fred. I think you're lying to me. <laughs> so patchwork pictures. It is an historical battle. It is the battle of Isurium. Uh, but the thing is that it didn't give us a specific uh, set of units. It gave us a number of points. So probably the units are not really representative of what the battle was. Uh, for example, uh, I have. Um, I'm pretty sure they had uh, Kantari, uh, so uh, lighter cavalry. Pretty sure they did. But I don't think they had the Catafractari in that battle. But, uh, you know, they were available, and no one told me I couldn't, so I just uh, took them. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Okay. I really suck at spatial measurement, especially on a computer. I'm just, like, looking at this thinking, I have no idea. I think you can definitely do it. It will totally work. 2.5 and 3, I'm pretty sure you can, yeah. Do you it. You know what? I'm going to F around and find out, because if I'm wrong, it'll just be funny. So yeah. it's fine. <laughs> That's All right, the spirit. So yeah. We'll go 2.5. I, I can shoot it at angle, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. the line of sight is fine. As long as anything from your front is touch touching any parts of my card, you're fine. So I can uh, shoot that thing for sure. Yeah. So we could go 1, 2.5, and move the half. The fine. And a yeah. half, like that. Yep. And now let's see if let's you move right up on that ruler to make sure we're not. I'm not messing up my little line sight here. So I could go. Yeah. This would be so much easier in person. I'm not gonna lie. There we go. Okay. So actually, I think that someone. I don't think saying... I can get you. I think that someone was saying it in the chat, but I think if we do the tab to measure. Uh, oh. and, and if you divide by five, it actually gives you the distance. So for now, I'm a bit further than yeah, 40. Yeah, you're too far. Yeah. That's okay. Um, I will just live with it. Uh, and actually, those ones are closer. So you would have, yeah, I think if you maybe had moved slightly, oh, maybe not. No, it's a bit too far. No. Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep my 2.5 movement, but yeah, we'll just live with it. It's fine. 
And yeah, it's I agree. Okay. I think it's fine to commit to a movement and then realize that it doesn't work. Uh, I agree with Yann. Like, uh, it feels a bit old school, but then I think it's it kind of is a bit more like it's a bit funnier. Like you're attempting something and then you realize yeah. it, it it just doesn't work, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, so that's well. Uh, I feel so like a lot of ancient battles are probably a little messier than we realize as well. Okay, so I should draw a card, right? Uh, you should draw a card indeed. All right, so we'll take these little thingies off. And let's do it. Do, do, do. All right, I got a good card. Uh, no, I don't. I think your card is shit, because I have all the good. I have all the good cards. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, okay, let me think. I'm actually being really good. I'm not looking at your cards like while you're. Uh, okay, I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Everybody, tell me what Fred has, so I don't have to actually do the cheating myself. You can just. Help. I, I think I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna do something simple, so we get a bit of action, and we're gonna have a first blood. I'm gonna play skirmish, and skirmish is to activate a single unit. And the unit that I'm going to activate is uh, Deus Castan <laughs> the Cataphracts. <laughs> and we're going to have fun now. Uh, so I have a move of five, and I'm going to do a good old uh, charge. Uh, so, oop, sorry. Uh, yeah, how does this work with the diagonals? Like, I saw images in the book of things, like, tilting onto each other so they were front to front, but I didn't really understand how that worked. Uh, so I think you have kind of a – wait a minute. I'm going to move to 15 degrees here. Uh, you can actually uh, move at an angle like this. I think that's fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then normally when we pivot, we should actually pivot from a corner. The thing is that in TTS, it's impossible to do, so we're pivoting from the middle. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty uh, pretty pretty much it. And can the uh, Celtic chariots dismount? I'm pretty sure there are special rules for things like this. Uh, but in this basic scenario, we're just gonna. We're just going to play it basic. Um, and then you have, when you're getting contact for the charge, you've got a, a free pilot to see, depending on where you're hitting, you can uh, go on the side or go on the front. Uh, but yeah. Uh, OK, so I'm going to move my first three uh, and then uh, have an extra. Oops, wait a minute. Uh, and then, no, I want to hit the, oh, God. <laughs> Big mistake. Uh, okay. I'm going to put so, it. Fun Latin fact. My most commonly said word in Latin that my students all pick up first is just eh you, which means oh no, because everything in my life is like <laughs> oh no. <laughs> One, two, three. And then I'm going to. Yeah, so I'm actually, I'm actually definitely within the range of five. Uh, so that's my last du for four, and actually have one have one extra. So this is my charge, and now when I'm done with my charge, uh, I need to choose uh, how I want to orient myself. Uh, so that's uh, the charging, and it shows it here in the rule book. People want to see. So you go in contact, and you decide uh, how you want to face uh, the unit that you're in contact with when you're touching uh, a corner like this. Uh, so of course. Um, so there is an interesting part. If you look at those cards, you see that there are uh, divisions on the cards. And actually, yeah. the number of divisions that are overlapping between the units is the number of dice we're going to throw, uh, which is uh, actually pretty cool. Uh, so the more range you're put, like the more space you're putting, the, the better it's going to be. And you have like extra tokens that we're going to use uh, now that actually extend extend that, uh, that range. Uh, so I'm going to actually face your flank here. OK. Just like that. Uh, and then, uh, doo -doo -doo. so how many uh, charges movement uh, with exception if you want to earn extra? Mm -hmm. Contact the enemy to make you move now. Uh, line up to the side you wish. Uh, the section now. Uh, seeing if there is two sections and a portion of the third section in contact, then it's not uh, OK. In case one or more section of the front are free, you will have the opportunity to envelop the enemy using the appropriate markers. So I have. Uh, so if we look at this situation here, um, I actually have. So I'm going to make them match a bit more uh, cleanly here. So we're doing this nicely. So I'm actually facing like this. Oh god! So we have <laughs> one two in contact. So that means that I have two that are free here. Mm -hmm. So that means that I can envelop uh, for free. Ah, right? interesting. So those two things. So I'm going to 
extend my range here and envelope you here. So that's going to be one. I'm actually glad to do this because I had wondered how this worked and I didn't have like a great understanding like of what this would look like. Yeah, and yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. Yeah, so yeah, so that's the so the, those were the the contact lines. So uh, four in the front, two on the sides, uh, and uh, and they match up uh, perfectly. It's just that you have this zone at the back that is actually not uh, a contact point. This is actually a blank point. So those are the two on the sides, and those are the four on the front. Um, so yeah, so that's just something to keep in mind. That is a bit uh, uh, that is a bit uh, weird. And yes, I have I have that free rotation. Uh, and I can uh, and I can play it like this. Good. Okay. So uh, now that we're in contact, uh, I think that does my movement uh, phase. I would do range attacks, but I don't have range attacks. Uh, and now I'm just going to check uh, what are the special abilities of my card. So it's the Catafactari. They have this lens thing. Oh yeah. Uh, Don't we play like events now? Is that what happens? Yeah, when we're going to start fighting, we're going to play events. So those are spearmen. Okay. Those units with long spears are very effective against mounted units. So that's awesome. I have a bonus against mounted units uh, of plus one, plus one to my attacks. So that's something that is quite neat. What are my other bonuses? Uh, I have the crescent thing. So that's fear. Uh, represents fear that certain units goes to their enemies. Units fighting in close combat with such units will always perform a role morale check with minus one. So that's going to be pretty bad for your, for your, for your dudes. Uh, and then I have this symbol that is lunge. Only applies when charging, and I am charging, but it's a charging against infantry units, so this doesn't apply. And finally, I have professionals, uh, so they're well-trained units. When they roll uh, the dice to hit or damage in ranged attack or melee combat, they may re-roll once uh, for each die that roll one. Uh, so you can re-roll a one, so that's uh, pretty cool. Okay, so... And then I get to pick mine, right? Uh, what do you mean? Don't you? Don't we both get an event? No, no. Yeah. So, so there is first a random event. Oh, you're effect. doing it. Yeah, that's yeah. right, right, right. And okay. then we're gonna both uh, play an event. So we're gonna go through the combat resolution, I guess. Uh, do, 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 where it is? <laughs> Sorry, I have to read through those things. So this is technic uh, technically a melee phase. So. Uh, we draw and resolve events. So standard simulation for the sequence. Does it mean that each of us uh, have to draw an event? No, I think we play one from our hand. That's why you have those dual action cards. But it does, it does say draw and resolve. You draw one and then we each play one. Oh, but draw is taking from your hand, right? I think draws take from the deck and then each of us plays one of our choice. Is what because I it says after playing a random event, the attacker may play an event. So first we draw a random one. Yeah, we draw a uh, random one, yeah. and then and then you play one, and then I can play one, yeah, and then we exactly. have to like do it all at the same time. Uh, so this is the random event. One the general. If the unit, uh, if the unit, the general is in, receives at least one damage. Okay, so that doesn't. Yeah, we're all good. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so we don't care about this. Now I'm gonna check. Do I want to play an event? Um... And yeah, yeah, I also love random events. I'm happy that they are doing this, Joe, because it feels a bit combat commandery, like you don't really know what's going to happen. I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, have a good night, Pierre. I'm a bit sad that you are not staying for longer, but that's just the way it is. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So, do I want to play an event on my side? Oh, that's pretty awful. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Trying to like. <laughs> I don't want to play that. Uh, you wanna... I'm actually going to play this. Nice yeah, I'm going to play this just to. Do I get to see it before I choose? I I think so. Um, the attacker may play an event from their hand, and after seeing the previous event, the defender can also play an event from their hand. So pretty cool. So I'm going to reveal the event that I'm playing. So I'm going to double the damage for uh, your unit inflicts double damage. Hmm. I'm thinking about what I want to do. Um, since we're just playing like for ninety, we're stopping in ninety minutes, right? Like we're yeah. not. We're, there's no way we're gonna actually finish this game. Oh, I think so... I can kill you before then. <laughs> 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 oh, you're coming to DC in April, right? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pay for that. Yeah. No, no need. I know. No need for me to know that information. It's, there's nothing, of course, going to happen to you. <laughs> okay, so I'm asking because it might be kind of fun for people to look at multiple event options and think them through. And if it doesn't really matter, then we could like look at a couple. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay, so ones that I think might be kind of fun are this kind of like just really bitchy choice. Um, where I can make us both broken after a morale check, period. Yeah, pretty cool. I like it. So, like, that's what I'm thinking about. Um, I think it's a pretty cool event. That, yeah. I think, you know what, actually, let's just go with that. Let's just yeah. do, like, the pure salted earth, like, I, I, I think th I, I think this is really good because that's literally my best unit of the whole army. So I think it's pretty funny that you're breaking them just for, <laughs> because, just for, kiss and, just for shits and giggles. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but be yeah yeah so the, and this is fine because also if you you were broken during the morale check this wouldn't get, make things worse so actually you're, right you're so free, my assumption you're is that you're gonna hit me pretty hard yeah which, i'm gonna so i'd probably end up broken anyway so yeah. like oh well i'll just ruin your day too <laughs> i think that's pretty awesome uh i i accept this uh okay so this is done uh we've done the things uh, so now we are uh, doing a simultaneous melee attack, I think. Is it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think we just both roll. So it's the standard combat. Uh, so for melee combat, count all frontal section, both of the cards and another pick section marker of the attacker in contact with those of the defender. Roll a die for each section, so that's going to be four. And okay. both attacker and defender will always roll the same number of dice. Okay, so I'm going to roll four dice. So that's the first step. Number of dice that I roll number of points of contacts, and we established that it was four, uh, one, two for the card, and three, four from the envelope, from, yeah. from the envelopment. I just um, rolled, it was a mix, uh, it, was, uh, it was what it was. <laughs> okay, uh, and maybe bring them uh, around here so I can I can zoom in to, uh, to Yeah, here to was my roll. I won't like try for a second roll just in case it ends up better. I think I have to keep the critical. Oh, I, I did an awful roll. You did really good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, anyway. That's okay, I broke you anyway. <laughs> uh, so damage as with range attacks first roll the dice to hit and with those that succeed a second roll is made to damage unlike uh, ranged attacks the attack value of each unit to hit and damage can be different so rolling a critical six is an automatic success and rolling a one is an automatic failure so this one is removed that's an automatic failure those two are, wait a minute. Uh, Those two sixes are automatic successes. Automatic successes. And now we're mm -hmm. going to check for the other numbers. Right. Uh, the attacker rolls first, and then the defender, both with the same number of dice, place as many wound markers. Uh, oh, that's the damage. Wait a minute. Where are Yeah, we're doing the did you hit me first. So the answer is on one of them, yes, for sure. Uh, and then on the others, we have to actually do some math. Yeah, and but wait, no, wait. On two of math. The other question is like, how do we? Set, does this mean that like, how? This is a stupid question, but I'm just gonna ask. So like, do we assign where the dice go? Like, can I assign my critical miss to where you put a critical hit, so I at least don't get hit three times? Or is it like, how does that work? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna because it it's it explains it more in the range attacks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read the combat resolution here. Uh, so the first the attacker rolls dice, two or four, and adds its attack value and all applicable modifiers to each of them. Each die that exceeds the opponent's defense value dodge is considered a hit. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, so I guess I have five plus my attack is six, so that's 11. And your dodge value is six. So yeah. those two fives are actual hits. Okay, so basically it doesn't really matter what my dice were, you're going to hit. Yeah, but I think you're doing hits too. That's the thing. So for you, you are uh, you are at 10 and my dodge value is 6. That's the thing. Can you really miss then, apart from rolling a 1? I don't uh, know. It looks like you're doing 3 hits and I'm doing 4. Uh... But how can that... Oh, because of the value to hit plus the die. Yeah. So I think, yeah, <laughs> I'm super confused. Uh, I'm going to read the example. Okay, so Arno, yes, yeah, this one side rolls for hits, and the, the, we roll for hits, and so we don't have any effect on each other on that. So basically, I would hit you three times, and you hit me four times? Yeah. 
But then do we need to roll something else? I think we need to... So we know that those are Oh, hit. we rolled for hit, and now we have to roll for damage. Yeah, so this one is not rolled. Uh, yes, no, I rolled for out. damage. And how do I roll for damage? Um, we're going to look at our little sorty swords and figure out which of the um, which value is for damage and which is to hit. But I think it's damage is on the left and hits on the right, yeah? The higher mm -hmm. value is to hit, and then the lower value is to hurt. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think the first one is dodge and the second one is armor. So I think I need to beat a six uh, to hit you. Uh, but the thing is that I have an attack of four. So as long as I don't roll a one, uh, I will hit you whatever. But I have a defense of eight, so that's going to be a bit more complicated for you. Uh, roll so... uh, one. Bro yeah, because isn't my attack... Can't I only really hit you for two? Uh, and, uh, your attack is two. Plus the die. Plus the die, yeah. Clearly, need... I just have to roll the devil's number, and then it'll be perfect. Yeah, three sixes, and I, I only damage you. Tw I only damage you. Uh, I damage you three times. That and was then, terrible. Yeah, five <laughs> plus two seven. So none of them, none of them actually do damage. No, that was just like a total whiff. But I broke you anyway with my terrifying uh, war cries. Yeah, but obviously. I do three hits, and because of that card, I double them, so that's six hits. So <laughs> it puts you. Uh, pretty much in uh, close to be fleeing territory, uh, honestly. Uh, so that's pretty nice. <laughs> Here you go. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, so you would roll normally for... Uh, you would roll normally for... Like a morale check? Oh, and I get to re-roll that one. Oh, yeah, that's right, Arno. Uh, I have this one. So wait a minute. If I re-roll that one and not roll the one again, yeah. Uh, so actually, <laughs> you get, you get to seven uh, because those are professionals. So this is the amount of damage. So you have one health point left. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, so you're going to be broken anyway, so it, it's useless to roll. But just for you to roll, just for you to know, you're going to... Uh, and, reduce uh, your morale by the number of hits that you took, and you're going to have minus one because I'm flanking you. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's total. Yeah, it's just there's no way. Yeah, so there is no way that you're going to beat that. So you're you're actually an automatic, uh, automatically broken. But because of the event, I'm going to get broken too. Um, and broken is this uh, one, I think. So I'm going to put those two here. But you're pretty close to being dead. I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to be broken here. And this is my whole activation. So what does brokenness do to you if you don't have any actual health loss? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, so actually, the thing with broken is that uh, if you were to be broken again, you would be fleeing. So it's like a two-step process. Ah, I see. Yeah. So it's just kind of pushing you towards being intimidated the heck out of here. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Pretty cool. Okay, I'm happy to use this for charge. Not really happy with the event that you played there, but I guess that's that's pretty much okay. I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm no matter so, what my army says, I'm outmatched in a game like this because I really total inexperience. So and yeah, uh, patchwork pictures. I, I've I've never played that game, but uh, I would be curious to to try it out. But I'm pretty sure that this game is definitely inspired by by other games of the same type that came before. Before, it. as I was saying in the intro, the concept of using cards instead of minis is not new. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense because then you have stats directly on the units and, and not on figurines, making it like a lot more playable. Uh, and I think it's definitely. Uh, an interesting uh, system. We're not doing really doing it justice because it's our first game and we're uh, struggling through it, but, uh, but it looks pretty interesting. So I do have a question for people who played other minis games in this, which is, is it a mistake for me to have this as my first minis game or is this like a reasonable one for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing? I really don't have the context to answer that question. But like, if you're like me and you just have no idea, is this like fine to just get and play or would you recommend something else? So I don't know what the chat is going to say, but while they are thinking about it and typing away, I can give my answer. I'm not a big minis player. I prefer when there is tessellation of space on my game. So I like hexes, I like areas, I like point to point. Uh, but I think from time to time, it can be fun. Uh, someone was, I think it was Russ, one was mentioning X-Wing. I played also quite a bit of... Um, uh, uh, 
Wings of Glory, which I think are probably better entry points into the mini system. I think X-Wing is great, especially if you're into Star Wars, but I would like pick one of those. You're into World War One, go with the first Wings of Glory. If you prefer World War Two, go with the World War Two version uh, of yeah. aerial combat. If you like Star Wars, do this. Uh, if you like bigger battles, go for Star Wars Armada. And I think those are great entry points for mini war games for people who have maybe also lower gaming experience. I think if you played a lot of games, a game like this is not too overwhelming. I mean, the rules are not too big, not too complex. Um, I guess you can do it, and it's not too hard. And especially the thing that is pretty awesome is that you get the box, and in the box, I think you have, I don't know how many armies directly in it. Uh, so it's actually, uh, it's actually, yeah, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, and then Roman exteriors and mercenaries. So you have six armies, quite a lot of scenarios. I think it's a great entry point. Like the value for money, compared to other uh, minis uh, war game, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, oh, yeah not... that's clear. Like you don't have to go like spend your entire. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of how practical it is, because I was talking about Blucher. I think Blucher is an amazing system, but it's not friendly. Like you have to buy a rules book, and then you have to find somewhere cards on War Game Vault or something like this. Then you have to figure out how you're going to do this, this, and that, and it's. Here you buy a box, you have literally, you open it, you have everything in it, which I think the convenience of it is 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 actually pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, but I think that someone like Jan might probably have some better tips because he plays a lot of, of those games. Well, actually, he's, yeah. I, okay, now run, actually. Great, great recommendation uh, for, for uh, Age of Sale stuff. Uh, and I think Oak of Iron really goes in the same direction of what I was saying for um, Aerial Combat uh, with, with uh, uh, Wings of Glory and all this. Like, it's a simpler format and great entry points. You have got, I think, Oak and Iron, and correct me, Jan, if I'm wrong, already has pre-painted minis, um, uh, and that's 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 pretty cheap. You can play immediately out of the box. It's very friendly. I think it's pretty it's pretty dope. Uh, and what Patchwork Picture is saying, definitely cheaper uh, if you get into it. Have a look at Blurb and play DBA. Yeah. Yeah. The system nice. seems better than DBA already. So yeah, I think it's a great entry point, definitely. I think like even the people who are more experienced, uh, and I see that there are a few in the chat, seem to say that it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, um, I, yeah. specifically because like if I was reviewing this game like and I'd played it a bunch, I still wouldn't know the answer to that question. So I feel like it's really helpful. I think if people are watching the stream, even if we can't like teach them the game, like we can give the collected wisdom of the chat, like you know what kind of value does this have and like what kind of systems does it seem to be and yeah. all that. And, and Arnaud is really like hammering the point I was making earlier. Usually those mini starting box, uh, they give you, like they cost a lot of money and they barely give you enough to play actual interesting games. In this one, you have so much material. Um, and that's because it's so cost effective to replace uh, minis with cards. This is also one of the things that I really like about this. Um, and yeah, and it, I also feel like it makes the whole process of minis a bit smoother because your cards and the distance is based on card lengths and everything. It yeah. Makes, yeah, it, it actually removes some of the rough edges, uh, kind of, not totally, but kind of some of the rough edges from, from other miniature games. So I think it does it does some, it does this pretty, pretty cool, pretty, pretty well. But I would still say uh Blucher uh is definitely something that we could explore afterwards if you're if you're interested. And I'm pretty sure that Jan would be more than happy to facilitate a game of Blucher for, for us. Um, and or I'm pretty sure we'll find someone online who would be just so excited for us to play Booker. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't. We could we could do that. And I think it's it's just a, it's a really amazing system. It has yeah. this activation where you roll dice for your opponent, and it's hidden, and you know how many activations they are going to do, and they do something, and it it tells you the cost of the activation cost of it, and you tell them yeah you can do that, and you do stuff, and at some point your turn is going to end. It's going to be your opponent telling, well no you cannot do that. You don't have any point any more points now, and you're in the middle of doing something, and you have no idea of how much point you have, and all of a sudden your plan is like collapsing because your opponent is saying sorry you cannot do it now. It's my turn. It's really really cool, um, but uh, but yeah maybe we'll have the opportunity to to play it in the future. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I also want to mention uh, that Onus has, and I, this is the other reason I'm asking, right, is that like this is on my mind. Like I need to test out the solo, but if I'm going to be able to find people to play this with. The other question is, um, you know, this is a lot of content, but there's also, um, they have another Kickstarter up, and I was curious because it's based on the, uh, like, have y'all seen The Eagle? It's based on those like Simon Skiro novels that yeah. like inspired it, and I think that that is so charming. Yeah, it is. Um, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. 
So, they, you know, yeah. the novel has its creepy aspects, but it's still really fun to read. So. Uh, and yeah. Okay, good. So we have Jan who's up for facilitating. Uh... Oh, yeah. I thought you had kept on playing because uh, Jan and I played Blooker a while ago. Um, but uh, I mean, if at least there is three of us uh, and, and one can be the um, umpire. And I know that Jan is actually umpiring for quite a lot of uh, Kriegspiel games and everything. Could be cool to have you on uh, to, to, to help facilitate a game like this. I think especially for minis games, it could be really cool. So yeah, think about it and we can talk about it, Jan, and maybe organize something like this and explore a bit more uh, miniature games. Anyway, I drew my card. So I'm back to five now because I used an event. Uh... And yeah, that's uh, going to be your turn. All right. Um... Let's do something. Cool. Thanks, Jan. I think with that first skirmish here, I already won. <laughs> 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 um. Hmm. How can I make your life bad? That's the question you want your friends to ask. So, so um, no. Uh, so, just for regarding the cataphracts, uh, I know that I'm not supposed to have them. Like this is uh, completely uh, kind of yeah uh, out of place. But the rule book didn't specify that I wasn't allowed to use that unit. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna use those. Uh, classic yeah. Fred cheating. <laughs> We so know I, how you really are, Fred. I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it does. It did cost me a legion because it's two hundred points. Like it, like it's literally uh, almost a third of my army. So yeah, that was yeah. So I had to have those shitty velites just here uh, instead, which is clearly the weakest point of my uh, of my army. Mm. All right, just to just to keep messing, let's activate everything. Because why not? I don't even have to put any activation markers out if I'm activating everything. Yeah, you can activate just everything. Go, yeah. Oh, and those are in contacts. Uh, yeah, they're so, just gonna fight, right? Like, yeah, they're gonna they are gonna, they're gonna do a, they're gonna do a meta fight. Yeah. Yeah, and then this guy, these guys will die, and oh well. Um, but I do believe. Let me think this out. Ooh. Okay, about movement. I would like, since I'm activating, to move some of these guys and shoot at these guys because that seems fun. I feel uh, like I can do a range attack. That you can move true. sideways, can you not? Yeah, you can move sideways. The thing is that we are in melee, and I think range combat is going to be a bit of an issue. Why can't I yeah, do it? Neither I the shooting unit, just... neither the shooting unit, nor the target unit can be engaged in melee combat unless the card states otherwise. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think we're literally now at this stage we're literally almost mixed together. So I guess if you do range I mean, attack on me, I they're gonna die anyway. So yeah. <laughs> I think I think it would be cool to house rule that and say, you know what? If you do damage, you do damage to both units, or you split it in two, rounding up, uh, and and that could be actually a, a cool step to do. That would actually be really fun. Yeah. We don't have to do that though. Um, <laughs> tell you what, why don't I just do two? That way, I can just move two guys double, and we'll we'll work, we won't do some huge move that'll take an eternity. So I can uh, act, activate two. So I can move double. They can't charge. They don't get a marching marker. Oh wait a minute! That reminds me that do we need a marching marker for to keep on the units that we've activated? Well, basically, no. Marching just means like you can't you can't like march and then attack, from what I recall. Yeah. That there's like a limit on how much stuff your guys can do. Yeah, but if you. Oh, if you, Arno uh, has a good point. Uh, let me check. Uh, oh, yeah, because the first one. Um, I didn't double. Oh, I didn't double the reroll hit. Yeah, you couldn't have a. a, a Aw. Oh yeah. well. Yes. So they are dead. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's actually a good catch. The thing is, I'm wondering: is those are these two still here or not, or do they go away? Because what, what am I enveloping here? I don't know. I don't know if you know the, uh, the answer to that question, but. 
because I know I can have some of them on the edge here and here to actually extend my front. And that would cost me some morale points, but this He's is... not wrong that the shots will just bounce off of y'all, but it's fun. Honestly, I really do think this cataphract might be OP for this particular scenario. Yeah, I think it definitely is. It's completely <laughs> absurd that I'm having them. Yeah, the section disappears. Okay, yeah, great. So this disappears. I'm not enveloping anything anymore. I'm going to keep them. But yeah, come, come, come at me. But we'll just, we're just going to laugh about it. Um... Uh, so then maybe you need to change your activation because you're not going to be able to do what you want with that. Yeah. All right. Tell you what. Um... Actually, it does say double move. It doesn't say, and you cannot do melee charge. Do it doesn't else. say range attack. I think you can do range attack. You could do. Well, I was thinking the first it might move. be kind of fun. Like we could just do yeah. a, a move and then like a half and, move and then go little... back. Yeah. 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 Do half move and then attack and then go back uh, with full move, so I cannot charge at you. Oh, that's actually pretty smart. But I, okay, I can do that with two of them too. Yeah. Okay. So I would do it one at a time. No, you move it. You, you would do your first move for each of them, and then your second and move the attack, for each of them. and then yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, da -da -da. You can activate two units, which can move double. No, they can. Oh move no, double. it just move double. They can't okay. move back. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, I, oh, I thought you it was split yeah. your move, can't you? Yes, but once you go is into it the twice, or is it move no? It's a double total... move. It's a double move. Yeah, because you would do movement and movements, and range attack is another phase. So you wouldn't be able to move, then range attack, then move again. Uh, okay. You've, you've well, got some events like this in Commands and Colors, which is actually pretty cool, but uh, you, no, not, it's not that event. All right. Well, that gives me... The other question is, if I plan a range attack at the end, do I get one full movement and then one half movement? Uh, I would say, because it's a double move, I would say a full move and then half a move. Yeah, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Okay, so let's say that this they have a movement of three. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you probably so don't need the say... double move to do that anyway. Yeah, let's Where, do their, one... range, their range is three, and we're definitely within six. Definitely, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess we'll. I'm, I'm like freaked out by the fact that I have no spatial understanding of this game, so we're gonna move up just a little bit. I'm just really anxious that I, I just cannot gauge. <laughs> I really like. <laughs> gonna be fine um this is actually like this is what i was really bad at as a kid too like it's like a real struggle with um spatial reasoning so geometry was not your not your no thing. i mean i made it through everything because i had to right but like that doesn't mean that you're actually good at it so we can move up to 1.5 here for your half move yeah I wouldn't go too close so then. Yeah, yeah. You were you were here. So if you want to move, you. Uh, up I think that's here. A... Like that okay. would be one. Yeah, one definitely no, yeah. no closer than that is fine. Yeah. Um, and then for the other guy, let's do this. We'll go right. So that's one. Or maybe yeah, maybe a little bit like that. So we can keep. And then. That was right here. And then we'll just basically do the same thing. We'll just come up one like that. To one point five, yeah. I think that's. I yeah, think that's perfect. enough. I think so too. I think this might be too far. I don't know. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna cheat and check it because you have a cataphract and f you. Let me check. Uh, <laughs> Seventeen. Yeah, you're 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 not you're not in range. Yeah, so, but I do yeah. have a double move. So. Yeah, do your double move so you could you can definitely move in range. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do again another rotate. I should have just rotated more last time, but oh well. Yeah. Um, and then let's. So uh, that would be your first move, and then you can you do. Yeah, your we'll half move up move. like yeah. one more. I don't have to go too far. Yeah. Why does rotating things on here suck so much? Yeah, that's TTS for you. I think that this game would benefit definitely from. Oh my god! Yes, uh, it would just play it physically. I think yeah. this would be super fun on the table, actually. Yeah, the problem is a yeah, bit. Let's space, go up like but, that. Uh, yeah. That'll do. That's definitely close enough. Ah, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. I was trying to measure, but I don't know how you'll do that. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, I can tell you, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're within range. Yeah. So we know that this is going to be ineffectual, but if you were normal for this battle, this would be, I think, a perfectly reasonable thing to do. So actually, you have one that is pretty good because you are actually, uh, you, you have a line of sight to my flank here. Uh, so you're going to fire with that unit uh, on my flank. 
Yes. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you're not in short range. Uh, not far from it, but not in short range. Uh, so actually, you know what? I would actually do an extra move like this. We, we yeah. would say that you actually did the move like this. Yeah, and I had more yourself. movement to use. So. Yeah, yeah, because you had them. Uh, and then you would uh, fire from my flank at short range. So that would make sure that you use... Yeah. Uh, the, the the full value of your attack, which would be which would be better. So how cool. would we so calculate you, that? I'm bad. At so this you've done your you've done your move. Now we're gonna do we're going to the range attack phase. Uh, and yeah. range attack phase is pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, if you're in short range, you're gonna roll four dice. If you're in uh, uh, long range, you're gonna roll two dice. I think that if I remember well. G -g -g -g. Yeah. So it's going to be two dice for uh, this guy and four dice for this guy. Uh, so we, you have line of sight, so there is no problem here. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do, you've uh, checked the thing that you're going to draw a random event. All right, let's find out what happens. How do I just grab one, right? And flip it? Yeah, just grab one, yeah. And, let's and bring, bring it, it up here. It's in yeah. our general area. So if there is a range attack, the minimum hey! number of catches because we'd be two regardless of the dice roll. This is cool. The event you better not have impossible shots in your hand. I swear to God. Cancels this. Does he uh, have it? Uh, what do I have? Do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have it? Uh, no, but I have another one that uh, that does it. So that's uh, so I'm gonna play this. Oh! Actually, uh, that, but that, uh, no, no, I, I'm not gonna play anything. You need to play it first, I think. Right. Uh, after that, the defender. Uh, then, the, so you can play an event now. Mm. I don't have anything that's great for this, honestly. So I'm gonna have to skip it. Like I just don't have it. The one card I have that would apply, I really want to keep for the command. So. Okay, so now I'm gonna play this, uh, which <sighs> is uh, no surprises. So that is such events. BS. <laughs> so it's, you yeah. cheated. Fred totally went through the deck and. <laughs> Definitely, I seeded the deck. I always do that. <laughs> Joe will tell you when I when I when I play uh, just the Robin Hood. I always make my whole seeded deck. It's like, yeah, oh my god, that event is really coming at the right How time. Huh? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is well designed. <laughs> <I'm> really impressed. <laughs> oh, he hates man. it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so that's for that. Uh, so now that we've done this. <laughs> Um, so combat is divided in two phases. So first hits. So first the attacker rolls the dice. So it's going to be two for one, four for the other, and adds the attack value uh, and applicable modifier for each of them. Each die that exceeds the opponent's defense value, so the, the dodge is considered a hit. So you need to beat six, uh, and you're firing with three. Uh, so as long as you roll, it needs to be higher or equal or higher. Exceeds. Yeah. So it needs to be higher. Really? So, this is yeah. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. Excellent. I'm very happy with that. Uh, this is oh, exactly man. what, so just for, for to illustrate, this is exactly what Liz uh, shouldn't have rolled. So um, so that's another tip for, for you uh, new gamers out there. You need to roll better. Uh, and then you roll two dice with, uh, with this. Ooh, I can actually... Oh, hey, I'm being helpfully informed that 2 plus 2 is 4 on here. Hey, it's 6! So I so, critical miss, but also a critical hit. Yeah, so critical hit. So that succeeds, uh, and now you're going to roll for damage. So the attacker rerolls only the dice that hit, add to each of them the attack value uh, and any ap applicable modifier. Each die that exceeds the opponent's defense value, the second the armor uh, hits. Yeah, there's no way so, these can actually hit. So, so that's actually need... the thing that kind of sucks about the cataphract being in here. There's, there's, I just don't think I have anything that can consistently overcome yeah you need like, to roll a monster a, defense like i just don't you, really you need to roll a six actually to have them yes oh something something yeah so that's a hit uh so well, i'm gonna get a one. damage yeah it's pretty good uh i think in Sakata frank that's actually uh a, a decent uh, yeah i mean these guys are gonna just struggle like i just and yeah. they are and they are broken. Uh, are you sure there wasn't anything in the rules about these? Like just period wise, or like there was nothing. So, that... <laughs> so there is technically da, 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 no. So I'm not a, a, a allowed to use the Praetorian cavalry, uh, the Praetorian guard, uh, the Equites uh, Singularis Augusti, the the Balisate, and I'm not allowed to use uh, mercenaries. But it doesn't say anything against the Cataphracts. <laughs> because the other units look like a fairly normal matchup. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Including the Qatari, really. Like they're fancy, to, but to to be fair, still... this is this is in terms of point as big as two uh legionaries. So it did cost me quite a lot of points, if that makes it better. not really. Like <laughs> We did wipe out 172 points just in one go, so you know, so maybe that's <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, so I did get a hit, uh, and because I got a hit, I think I need to do um, so I need to do a morale check. Uh, and here is the thing so if I lose my morale check, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be fleeing because I'm already it's broken. Very unlikely you'd lose that, right? But yeah, like... it's so what's the so my morale is seven and I have a hit one hit, so I'm actually gonna be at six. Uh, and by the when... way, I want to note to patchwork pictures like I'm aware, but I really don't know what I'm supposed to do about it, man. <laughs> yeah, and the number needs to exceed, so I'm at six, so there is no way I can lose that morale check unless you give me an additional damage. Uh, maybe you so... can just roll a one. Oh, yeah, because that would be an automatic failure. You're right. Uh, so roll I'm gonna do a that. one, roll a one, damn Wait. it. <laughs> Uh, and so that was range attack, uh, and we and there is no flight, so that's fine because no one is fleeing, and that's the end of the turn. So we discard this, and you can draw a card. You must be low on cards now. Oh no, not that much. Not too bad. That's okay. Okay, come on, card. There it goes. Hmm. This card sucks. Well, yeah, I'm going to play this. Uh, I don't think I have a choice. You can activate as many units as your general leadership value. Uh, so that's going to be six. So. <laughs> Not not a big surprise here. Uh, you're going to see what's coming. I feel uh, like this is like a game club where I watch the kids play, and there will be some kid that's teaching the other one to play Magic the Gathering, but like they've got their special deck that they made, and then they give like a random deck to the other kid, and they're <laughs> like, oh, haha, I won. Funny about that. That's absolutely not what's happening. It's all, <laughs> I, I promise it's my first game. I haven't practiced for years before. Uh, before we play this, and I did, I don't own the original uh, version of the game. <laughs> this would be helpful. It's like, oh, by the way, did I mention that I've been playing this professionally for? Uh, so this is going to be charging here, and I'm going to put myself on the side like that. I think that's going to be, if everything goes well, that should be the end of your flank here. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to be able to place those envelopments here. Uh, so that's one, one. So those are my two charges. And then I'm going to be able to move the other ones. Uh, and I guess we're going to continue with my original strategy of denied flank. So two, one, two. Uh, and here I'm going to keep on moving. I have my legions coming in. So this is a three coming in here. Uh, yeah, those ones are pretty tough, but they cannot move really fast. That's going to be two. And then those guys are also going to be able to move two. And they are actually going to move one. Uh, wait a minute, how fast can you go? You can go up to five. I think I'm still fine. One, two. And this is my move. Oh, and we have Meandering Mike joining us. Uh, hey, Mike. And, oh, actually, Joe is asking if a broken cataract can charge. I don't know if there is a rule against... Uh, uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can. It's just that it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty brutal. Uh, yeah. 
broken units move reduced and cannot charge. Oh, so can I charge with that that cataphract or not? Or is it just a? But I was close enough to do a melee attack, right? So Jan, if you can tell me if I can actually go in contact and do a melee, uh, that would be uh, that would be nice. Because I just went in contact, so I think it's I think it should be uh, it should be fine. But just in case there is a mistake, I'm gonna do the only charge that I know is for sure correct while Yan is looking into it, and that's gonna be uh, this one. Uh, so I have an attack of four. Uh, you have a dodge of uh, six. So I need to roll uh, I need to roll threes uh, to succeed, uh, and I have four dice. And you need to roll, uh, so you have an attack of two, and I have a defense of six. So you need to roll fives. Oh, I got one. Ah. OK, I got two. And then with that, uh, so I attack at four again, and you have a defense of five. So I need to roll with, yeah, if I do a two, I'm good. And if I roll one, I will. Uh, are they professionals? They are. They are. Are they professionals? I don't know. I mean, they're the, Roman military guys, probably. What's the What's the marker for professionals? But I rolled a five, so I don't know what that means. But I did roll it. Uh, no, they are not. Those are not professionals. So you have a five plus two seven, so that's a hit. Ha! Uh, something, something for me. Just one thing. And I did two hits, so one hit for me oh and we didn't do the events sorry oh, oh yeah uh roll twice as many dice to hit uh, and choose half of them okay so oh that's fun yeah but that's the same uh so roll two more uh this because this is both for attacker and defender and yeah and we're not going to do our own events because it's a bit late for that but yeah whatever it's fine yeah so that didn't go well for me anyway uh take the three that you just rolled right i don't know does it count uh, let's check. Uh, so you're at three, three plus three, six. No, it doesn't count. So that's going to be still one hit for me, uh, two hit for you. Um, so one and two. Boop, boop. So yeah, the cataphract cannot make frontal contact. So they cannot attack, right? Not at all. Uh, is there anything I can do to actually make them unbroken? You can uh, get... What was it? You can get the game about escaping the dungeon from Artem Safarov. Unbroken. <laughs> That's not. Was that it Golden does, Bell? You can get does, Golden Bell to stop to actually like get it that, together. <laughs> that doesn't help. Uh, now you need to do a morale check. Uh, so I can do rally, but when can I rally? Is it at the end of the turn thing that I can do? Mm -hmm. Uh, so you need to roll for your... Uh, so you have minus one because I'm flanking you and you have minus two for your casualty. So you're at minus three. So if you roll a four, uh, you're actually broken. Nice. <laughs> oh, well. So when I did my I best. So I, I couldn't have moved here. So that's that. Da -da 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 -da. Fortunately, there's only like five minutes left of your time when limit. So yeah, <laughs> when this occurs, it's a working in Yeah, I, I'm a bit sad about this. Uh, so end of turn phase. When can I? How can I ready? Where where do I find this? Is there an index? Yes, there is. Oh, it's an, in alphabetical order, which is nice. Uh, Amazing. And yeah, but the thing is that rally is it's not, actually not in the index. It's not in the index, which <laughs> is which is quite annoying. Uh, how can I rally? Can someone tell me how can I rally? You know? <laughs> so, actually, it's not, it, it's hard to find information regarding the broken units. I, I think I would say that the the rule book is. I guess not... you look up broken, and then you look up the things. Yeah. regarding brokenness. The rule book is not amazing, amazing. It's okay. And sometimes there are bits of Spanish. So if you look at broken, you have information at page 27, 32, and 42. Wait, are there actually bits of Spanish? Uh, yeah, in some of it, yeah. Oh, that's fun. 42. Uh, I looked at 32 and it didn't look promising. Okay. 
Okay, that didn't say anything. What's the first page where it gets mentioned? Uh, uh, 20, uh, yeah, uh, 27. 27, uh, 32. It says, Brooklyn need to mark a unit break when they fail their morale check. Same game circumstances. Oh, it looks like you just do another morale check. Wait, no. Uh, the thing is that I, I wouldn't have gone in contact um, uh, patchwork pictures uh, if I couldn't attack. So I wouldn't have moved. I would have placed myself to do rally. The thing is that... Um, Oh, so I can... Okay, so I could have done a morale check at the beginning of my activation. So when I was here, I could have done a morale, morale check then, right? Is that it? Ah, this is interesting. So maybe I should look at the... Oh, God. At the activation? I want to point out that I lived with my mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is that I was not even <laughs> I wasn't able to go in contact with you in the first place as long as I was broken. So I have to take it back either way. The thing is that Fred is French. <laughs> <laughs> so he keeps playing with words and creating this convoluted <laughs> concept. Y'all can't even French. count normal. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> oh god, that's awful. Awful. Unrespectful. Activating broken if you activate a broken unit, so this is not in the index, and actually that's quite critical. Like it's page 13. If you activate a unit that is not already in combat, you may then perform a raw check with on a pickable modifier. If the unit passes it, it reorganizes. Okay, so let's take that all over again. Um, so I am broken. I have a damage. So I need to roll seven. So I will get reorganized, actually. Yeah, so that's all that for nothing. So I will roll that dice. Oh my god, I'm reorganized. That's awesome. Cool. So I'm not broken anymore. Now I can charge, and now we can do the, the oh, violence. Great. Now Here. we can do the violence. I'm gonna I'm gonna play like Fred, y'all. I'm gonna roll my dice. Uh, okay, so we're gonna roll four dice what because we think? have four areas call, right? in contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's pretty... roll for I'm not. I'm not even sure that's enough. I'm not even sure that's enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's the thing against. Yeah, yeah. Six is a hit. Yeah, you need a five or six, five or six to hit me, uh, and then we can roll for for damage. All right, I actually uh, rolled oh, wait a, a five, two sixes, and a one. So that's actually but, not that bad. That's actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to get the random event here first. Uh, my bad. Oh, if the well. defender flees or is destroyed, the attacking unit can move again half of its movement uh, value and uh, even charge. Okay. So that's good. So I have a one. I think I can reroll. Oh, wait, one. I can play one, right? Yeah, you can play one. I'm but we've play, already, let's, try, yeah. let's try this one. Pikes versus mounts. You don't get mm -hmm. to be rules lawyer with me, Fred. So you have uh, plus, oh plus one plus one for everything. So nice. I'll receive your charge. Good. Oh wait, is it only wait? You count as a mounted unit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely mounted. So casualties are simultaneous. The defender gets plus one, plus one, and plus one. Like I get extras. Okay. I'm gonna check those this professional thingy. When they roll the dice to hit or damage, they may re-roll once for oh once for each. Okay. Uh, so I have a two, you have a plus one, uh, I have an attack of four plus two, that's six. So that's actually not hitting you. So that's pretty good uh, with your plus one, plus one. And then I reroll this one. That's a hit. Then I roll this one. And that's a hit. Ah. So that's, that's three hits. That's and trash. you also, and you also have, and you also have three hits. So yes. now we roll for damage. Uh, I'll so you have my roll. That was good. <laughs> you have plus one. Uh, yeah, I do five. Ooh, so two fives and a six. That's not too bad. What does uh, that do for me here? So two, two, two. ah, actually, you'll need a six is a success. So yeah, but do... I have a plus one, plus one. My roll. Oh yeah, actually, the five is also a success. Cool. So that's actually three three hits. Uh, and that's two hits for me, and I get to reroll this one. Wait, so should I roll this one, uh, this other one again too? Uh, no, 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 I had like a, yeah. no, I have two yeah. hits. So it's three hits each, uh, and because we have the same number of hits, uh, we are going to both roll for uh, morale. All right. I don't think my morale is going to be great, but at least I did something. Yeah, you are. So if you roll a five or higher, you're out. Uh, I have four, so you have a four or higher. I'm broken. 
I rolled a four. I rolled a four. Uh, so you're fine. Yeah. For once. Ugh, and I'm broken. So that's that. Uh, yeah. So I didn't kill you or anything. So that's that. We've solved the two combats. So that's all good. I can put this back here. Can draw a card, and that would be the end of my round. Indeed. Oh, and we have Taylor watching. Hey, Taylor. Hello, Taylor. <laughs> nice to have you here among us. Uh, and I want to say, uh, Taylor released this week um, video review of um, this game, this interesting game. I don't remember the name. Uh, a very civil wist. Uh, he did that. Contrary to other uh, content creators that I know that received the review copy and haven't made a video on the game, I even just though it's in I have received nothing. <laughs> you haven't received nothing, really? No, I never heard from Phoenix. No, no, not from Phoenix, but I did send oh, you. Oh, that one. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I do have that copy. Yeah. So so Taylor did, you know, you see, Taylor is a real friend. Um, so no, <laughs> so a, a great video from Taylor. So if you want to have uh, like a trick taker's perspective on the game, uh, I think it's a, it's an amazing video for that. And when Liz will, will finally... Uh, <laughs> Like take some time on her very full agenda of uh, being mean to grog nerds on BGG. Um, hey, <laughs> she, she <laughs> I made finally... one nice comment. I want to point out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So and and, and Taylor, uh, yeah, I want to say if you want us to play the the hunt as a teach and play, I can check if we can get uh, Matthias Kramer on the on the show. I would be happy to have you on. You were asking about intro war games and everything. And I definitely think that the hunt is a potential uh, entry point. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but knowing Matthias Kramer, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. So uh, I tell you, uh, extend the invitation. I'm a bit late on Barrack Sampers. I need to do the TTS mod for GMT. Uh, and once the TTS mod will be out, we can uh, we can also play it. But that will take a bit more time. But for the hunt, yeah, definitely happy to um, Salted Pepper sent out a box earlier, so we could definitely do that. But anyway, shout out to um, Taylor Street Taking Table. Uh, awesome trick taking show. I love those videos. Uh, they are so funny. It's yeah, he's just he's just amazing. So if you have any interest in card games, you should definitely go subscribe, watch, like, uh, and support his work. It's it's really really awesome. Awesome. Oh, since we're kind of winding down, I have to make sure we announce something, which is that you are stuck with me again next week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I did say it at the beginning is that you're you're going to be here for seventy five percent of the streams uh, for for this season. So yeah, next week we're uh, we're doing the second episode of uh, War Game Archaeology. So that should be fun. Yeah, we're um, going to read some more more issues of the general. Yeah. See how it goes. Oh, also for those of you who are into solo war gaming, um, tomorrow the list that Brant from Armchair Dragoons and I worked on, like we polled the community about people's favorites, uh, is dropping uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. So if y'all are into that sort of thing, there's going to be a geek list. I'm doing a video. Armchair Dragoons is doing like a written thing and a podcast. So um, we'll all be having a good time. Yeah. And on this, you know, we talked about this series, Alone Together, where you, you play with me solo games. I got a reply from... Uh, uh, my God, have a, uh, from Mary and Amabel uh, from Hollandspiel, uh, and yeah, they are they are up for it. So we could start with uh, one of those, uh, a couple of um, Hollandspiel solo games. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'd be up for that. That'd be really fun. Yeah, so I'm gonna have a chat with them, uh, and we'll see how it goes. But expect Amabel to be back uh, on the show for an interview, uh, and then uh, we're gonna feature some uh, Hollandspiel solo games. Uh, going forward for our new series that we announced now called Alone Together, where uh, Liz will make me play solo games. Uh, so that should be fun. <laughs> and there are some questions about Night Witches. A couple of people in the chat want to know what's happening with White Night Witches. Um, so basically, David and I are trying to get people to give it a good rules read so that we can go into playtesting. But that we haven't gotten like super thorough feedback. So we're probably going to go through the rules very carefully ourselves and then go to playtest. Um, and then, uh, we don't know about like the art and stuff like that's Kevin Bertram will help handle all of that. But, uh, you know, Night Witches is fully designed, needs testing. 
Um, and that's what we're up to. Uh, if I, we have like a little form for like play testers, so if y'all want to email me about it, I'll send you the form. <laughs> so yeah, all good. Uh, if you're at SD Hiscon, um, I'll have a copy there. And I'll also have a copy at PAX Unplugged if you want to test some stuff out and you want to play Night Witches with me. Yeah, I forgot a symbol. I think I, I probably should have done more damage on on both those units, but that doesn't matter. No, thank you. Here, yeah. this is how this goes. It's actually like this. We're just gonna no take banks. We're gonna just. <laughs> Uh, I, I love that. I love that joke, Mike. I think it's really awesome. When is the solo game convention? I would love to see that. I think we should organize that one just to make fun of solo players because. Honestly, yeah. I think we'd have a great time because we would relax, play a game, and then we would like eat and talk about it, and everybody would be in a good mood and feeling social. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I have a. I, I, I must say, I'm, I'm I'm often annoyed by 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 solo players. I think the 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 concept is really cool, and I, I think you actually do a lot for uh, making solo players look cool. Uh, but when you actually interact with them, <laughs> most, of, <laughs> most, of, most of them online, it's like you come up with a game that is clearly not made for being played solo, like clearly not. And their first question is, will there be a solo mode for that? And you're like, what the fuck are you thinking? Like, it's a, it's a block <laughs> game. Like, it, it's supposed to have hidden information. What, why are you hey, asking me this? Just it's because like, you're not Ricky Royal doesn't mean you should be so bitter about it. And, and, and they were like, and they were like, why? Come on. Like, like those guys, like, if poker was released now, they were like, yeah, poker is interesting, but is there a solo mode? You're like, for fuck's sake, play Solitaire. You know, it's like, <laughs> stop asking for solo mode for stuff that are clearly not made for solo mode. It is so <laughs> annoying. It's. Uh, <laughs> Oh God! It's like, and they keep whining about it. Yeah, God, please stop. Anyway, but like, when is the solo coming out for a very civil whist, friend? Uh, well, you, I, I, I was, I, I'm, officially, I'm officially saying that you should design it, uh, and and that, would, and that would be perfect. No, I mean it's a whist game. Don't don't make it a solo game. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Major Ming Rank is saying this exactly. Yeah, like you literally have people asking for solo mode for auction games. I'm not, I'm not joking and bluffing games. And you're like, but. That just doesn't work. Why would you do that? Um, but yeah, anyway. Let's just rant over. Um, so you, should you take your turn and we should uh, end here in me uh, gloriously obliterating your uh, your right flank? Um, sure, if that would please you. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Yeah, we've not been very efficient. We've, there was a lot of rambling, no. a, lot, a lot of jokes. Uh, uh, but like, us, I really didn't come on here to rules. be efficient, say. Yeah. Oh, do we, uh, do we have any other business to discuss while I'm doing this? Okay, I'm going to just activate everyone for fun. Yeah, activate everyone, do your moves. Uh, there is one thing that I wanted to talk about, actually. There is not too many people in the chat, so I, I guess that's fine. But I just wanted to react to something that I've seen. So this week, I haven't been able to really be active on BGG or anything. I had a lot of work, and for the last couple of weeks, actually, it was hard. But uh, uh, Stuart posted a, a review um, of uh, the, the Picket Charge game from uh, Herman Lutman. And um, as usual, so, so I would say that um, Stuart has a history of being extremely critical of those games. Like it's a story that he's really close to. Uh, and he's done quite a lot of work of crit critically, critically reanalyzing those games and really thinking about what those what does those games say about um, about the hobby, but also about um, the, the American culture? Uh, he comes from the South, uh, so he's really uh, ingrained within all of this. So he really has a personal contact with all of that. I think it's really interesting. And the podcast that we're doing with him and Pierre uh, Stewart Jones, oh, with, and him and Pierre Vanier Jones, sorry, uh, is is all about this. And he always brings a lot of interesting perspective. It can be a bit spicy. I'm not gonna lie. I, I can understand that it makes some people upset. But, and, and I think it's, it's an interesting angle. Like it's a bit provocative, but I think it's, it's good to spark conversation. It's not insulting or anything. And he published this review on BGG. And I was a bit surprised by the, the level of violence of uh, some of the reactions. Um, and to be fair, I'm not that surprised. It's just that, yeah, you do expect some people on BGG to, to say some pretty rude things. Uh, as, as long as you say something radical, like say, you know what guys, slavery was not cool. Uh, that we know that 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 part of the uh, of the committee is a bit like this in the U.S. Uh, but the thing that I was a bit uh, disappointed by, I'm not sure disappointed is the right word, but maybe something that I would uh, a, a call to uh, Herman 
is uh, I think he's an amazing designer. I like a lot of his games. Uh, and I can understand that the review actually upset him because I, it's like it's literally directly challenging his choices. So, of course, it's a bit hard to read as a designer. But I think when he saw uh, the level of abuse uh, that Stuart got from some of the respondents, note that some of the respondents are known like racist. <laughs> like, yeah, it so is, I'll it, be real. One person in that dis- in that thing got actually kicked off the Tucker Carlson show. For being too racist. Like, just put that into context. You're being fired from the Tucker Carlson show for being too racist. So that's the kind of person that uh, Stuart was getting abuse from. And I think that... I think that as designers, even if something displeases us, I think it's fine to, uh, you know, to what uh, to push back and say it's not okay and I don't agree with you. But then again, it's also our responsibility. I think we have uh, kind of a, uh, some influence on the community, and I think we should be there to say, you know, what the way you are talking to that reviewer is not okay. They are entitled to their view. We can contest it. We can have some debates, but the way you're going through it is actually like it's not, it's not helping anyone. And also, I think that if I was Herman. I wouldn't want those people to be on my side, to be fair. I would want to say, you know what? I think your like your behavior is despicable. I don't want you to defend me. Like it's uh, let me defend myself. I will def- like I will make my own case for my own work. Uh, honestly, you are not helping me, and I don't care about your opinion because you look like a douchebag. Uh, and and this is really my my call to to Herman. I think like we have a responsibility to push back on those kind of people. We might disagree with Stuart. I think there is definitely some criticism that can be made on Stuart's uh, analysis that is deliberately provocative and, and trying to spark a conversation that is interesting. Uh, and maybe for, of course, in this process, is maybe going sometimes a bit in a in the spicy take direction, but not in an uncivil way. Like it's really an interesting uh, topic. And I would say that also his work is based on actual research, knowledge, like actual in-depth historical knowledge like it's not coming from nowhere we should value those kind of inputs we can challenge them but i think we we also need to defend the fact that we have that quality of discussion and we need to make sure that the quality of discussion is maintained so it's my call to herman please push back on those people we need to have those conversations it's happy to, we're like let's let's have let's agree to disagree but i think we should be careful not to be overly sensitive i think we should engage with interesting challenging uh, in-depth historical criticism. We can disagree with them. Um, we can point out if things are being unfair, that's okay. But the kind of reaction that was there, I think was was out of out of line. So the few things that I saw, a lot of it, of course, was removed by the BGG mod. So we have no idea of the context and everything. But the few screenshots that I saw, everything, I was like, this is fucking nuts. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's pretty annoying. Uh, and I think, yeah, as designers, when it's happening in our spaces, on our games pages, we need to push back. I think it's really important, um, even if we disagree with the person that we're defending. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's yeah, that's, yeah, just, uh, just me. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so I was very, I felt that I was marginally involved and then got turned into a main character by some people, which was very strange. Um, but all I did was basically... Um, uh, you know, and Herman Lippmann and I get along fine. Like, we are on totally good terms. Like, we talked offline about this as well. Um, so, just a preface. But I made one comment in that thread, which I tried to word as nicely as possible because I wasn't trying to start shit. But um, basically, you know, he said that, uh, you know, it's just a game. It's just there to be interesting. And you should just relax. And obviously, like, that's just not the business that fred's in it's not the business that i'm in it's not the business that stewart's in like people like dean throw are also not in that business like you know we're here to kind of enable games about games is what we do so i basically just felt that um he should own it more instead of try to do the backup um but you know i know everybody has different responses to feeling attacked online but i feel like if you're going to make a historical game that you have to kind of own the history and think about the perspective that you present and even if you don't agree with what people are saying about it that you still intellectually it's more honest to engage that yeah and just to be clear um i don't want to have the debate around uh is it an okay defense to say it's just a game or not uh i don't think it is but i don't think that's important in that specific case the thing that i'm saying to herman is well we might disagree, and I don't think that's a good defense, but that's not the that's not the problem. What I would like is that the people who are doing the abuse, that you clearly make a stand against those people. It's like, 
this kind of behavior, I don't want to see it on my page. You're not supporting me. Like uh, we can have a, like, I, I think he needs to clarify that the debate that he's having with Stuart and, and, and potentially uh, and you and potentially me, I haven't thought about it that much, uh, honestly, uh, I think should be on another level. Like it should be an interesting civil discussion because I think it's an interesting topic. We might come from it from different perspective. We might not agree and that's completely okay. I've read his answer to why it was happening. But yeah, first of all, saying it was a personal attack, I think was unfair to Stuart, but that's a different discussion. But I think he should have pushed back on the people being clearly abusive and, and some people that are clearly the worst of, of, of our hobby. That is actually making sure that the RB is not welcoming. And I think he should have like taken a taken a stand on this. Uh, and he can do it still. Like I'm not just saying, oh, he, he committed that sin and that's over. But I just want to raise his attention to this. Is like I hope that he does because he's such an important voice. He's just a, he's such a great designer. Um, I would like to see him do this because I, th I would love for him to, to be on the side of of good, interesting civil discussion, whether we agree or not. I don't care about that. I just want him to to take a stand on on this kind of behavior. Yeah, I think this also like you and I both review games. This is also sort of an important, the, an important part of the conversation, right? Is to what extent do designers and reviewers need to talk about the criticism that designers are getting? Like, I think about this as somebody who's going to have a game out in the next, you know, hopefully year or so. Um, but I mean, there's, there's definitely sort of an aspect of, you know, to Stuart is allowed to have an opinion about the game that, you know, like, even if you don't love the way that he expressed it, or even if you don't like, you know, if we're going to talk about things like free speech and we should all talk about different ideas, then mild disagreement or even vociferous disagreement shouldn't turn into the, the suggestion that somebody be canceled because nobody rational in that discussion was suggesting that, yeah. um, you know, this should be like, we shouldn't be jumping all the way from, I disagree with this. Or like, I think you came from an angle that's even an angle that's bad or damaging, right? Nobody's saying like, get rid of this game. And nobody's saying this person should never get to talk. Like nobody's saying any of those things. And so jumping immediately to that conclusion and then like yelling about it completely undercuts what we are, I think, collectively trying to do, which is have better conversations about games. Yeah. So that's it. I think we can end on that note. It's the end for me. Uh, it's one hour and 45 minutes. So I promised that it would be the, uh, the end of the stream. Uh, but thanks, Liz. I want to play this, um, probably not continue that battle. I would like to pick it up now that we've actually saw the flow of the game and everything. Yeah. I think I would like for us to do another game. It could be another stream or just the two of us. I don't really care. It could be on your channel or mine. I don't mind either. Yeah. But I would like to, now that we have the flow a bit, I would like to play it again uh, and, and uh, yeah, and go, yeah, probably the same scenario. I would not take the cataphracts this time. I think it's, it's definitely unfair. <laughs> uh but uh but yeah and uh so that was cool but thanks again liz happy to have you on the show as always absolutely uh, super happy to have you back next week to do some more game archaeology that's gonna be pretty fun um the podcast actually um we intend to move on your works uh around the lost cause uh in the um in wargaming uh episode two is coming uh tomorrow uh, I'm a bit late, but it's coming tomorrow. Uh, I finished editing it. I just need to uh, add some intro and outro, so it's going to be there. It's going to have some pretty, I expect some pretty rough reaction, but if someone, like, if you see people behaving like this, send them the clip of Liz and I talking about this, and I hope it will <laughs> calm them down. And I would say to Herman, happy to have you on the show, having any discussion. Actually, I would love to have you on the show just to talk about your games. We don't have to talk about this. Uh, I think it would also be awesome to have you on the show and talk about your overall career. Like it's a designer that I admire quite a bit. Uh, so that would be really cool. So um, I, I extend my hand toward toward Herman. I, do, I hope that my small comment making fun of him for being overly sensitive uh, didn't offend him. That was not the idea. It was just poking fun. Um, but yeah, just love the love his work. Uh, I'm sure we disagree on a lot of things, but doesn't mean that I don't, I wouldn't enjoy talking with him and exchanging ideas. I think that's, yeah. And I, I think he does a great work anyway. So yeah, uh, well, he's so got a Napoleon gaming coming out. I actually wanted to suggest, if we can all get to watch it, that we should watch the uh, Ridley Scott Napoleon film and then discuss it. That could be awesome. That could That'd be, be a really movie fun. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> that would be it on that note. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening and uh, see you uh, soon. Thanks, y'all. See you next week. Bye-bye.